وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين The last and ayat of Surah Kahf about whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that whoever recites these last and ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a nur for them from their feet up to their head and similar narration about the first and ayat and whoever recites Surah Kahf the whole surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a nur for them that extends from their feet to the skies and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from all sorts of trans tribulations and if that week if they recite it on a Friday and that week even the Dajjal comes out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect them from the fitna of the Dajjal up to ayah 90 Eight we had last, read last time, which was where <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us how Hazrat Zulqarnayn alayhi salam or rahimahullah, he uh, created a wall to restrict the Yajuj and Majud, the Gog and Magog. And he said that when the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, then this wall will become flat and be destroyed basically, and then they will come outside. So this refers to وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِينْ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ This refers to that day, that on that day, on the doomsday, when the world will supposed to be end and the great signs of it will start to arrive. One of those great signs is the coming out of the Gog and Magog in the time of Sayyidina Isa عَلَىٰ نَبِيِّنَا وَعَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ Allah SWT says, and on that day, we will leave them all the people, including Yajuj and Majuj, surging over one another. So if this refers only to the Yajuj and Majuj and they're coming out that day, as has been mentioned, that they will be so numerous that when they'll be coming down from the high mountains, it will feel as if they are sliding down and they will be admixed with each other on top of each other, basically. And if it refers to everyone, then on the Day of Judgment, everyone will be admixed together uh, on the Day of Judgment. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا And the horn shall be blown into فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا Then we shall gather them together. So this refers to the second blow on the trumpet. The first blow, Hadith Shafi alayhi salam will blow and all people will be annihilated, the earth will shatter and everything will be destroyed and nothing will remain. And the second blow where everything will start, everyone will start coming back to life. So this refers to the second blow that the نَفْخَ or the blow in the sur the trumpet will be blown and then فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا and then we'll gather them together. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَ إِذِلِّ الْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا and Jahannam on that day Jahannam will be 
fully exposed, brought before the infidels. So kuffar, they will experience the Jahannam. And one is the actual experience of Jahannam. One is the fear and the, uh, the apprehension that they would be tormented with, which is that this is where we're going to be put into. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And for kuffar, it will be forever and forever. الَّذِينَ كَانَتْ أَعْيُنُهُ فِي غِطَاءٍ عَنْ ذِكْرِ وَكَانُوا لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ Samar Allah SWT is saying that these people, these infidels, theirs, um, these kuffar, their eyes were under a cover against the reminders from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala عَنْ ذِكْرِ from my reminders. وَكَانُوا لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ Samar and they were not able to listen. So they had themselves put covers on their eyes and their ears and they were not able to take any heed. أَفَحَسِبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُونَ Do these disbelievers then think do they think that this was this is appropriate? That ayat taqidu ibadi min dunya awliya. That they take my slaves, my servants. Everyone is a servant in creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They take my servants min duni apart from me awliya, patrons against me or caretakers or basically maabud uh, worship them apart from me. So not worship me and include those in my worship or as partners. Inna atadna jahannam alil kafirin anuzula. Surely we have prepared jahannam. Atadna, this would kind of mean in our language to invite, to, 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 to feast them. Dawad dena. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it by a way of, uh, you know, humiliating them that this is your dawad, this is your invite, this is your feast. Inna atadna jahannam alil kafirin nuzula. We have prepared jahannam as entertainment for the believers. Nuzula. As this is their abode will be, this is where their uh, their station would be and they're as if a guest enters and they're honored this is their uh, their honor and this is their entertainment say to the people the Prophet ﷺ is commanded is being commanded to say tell should I tell you or shall we tell you it might be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we tell them that should Allah tell you because it is plural it refers to the uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that shall we tell you shall, should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you hal nubbukum bil akhsarina a'mala should we tell you about the greatest losers the biggest losers in respect of what they did amal means something that a person does with a struggle so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that tell them should Allah tell you about those who are the biggest losers in life the biggest losers who worked who did amal and still they are the biggest losers those who are the ones whose effort in the worldly life has gone in vain whatever they did they did and all that while they were thinking that they were doing great things that they were doing uh, really good so all this worldly life they kept on working hard and they kept on thinking they were engaged with this thought, this understanding that we are doing great. We are very successful in terms of our deen, take it in terms of deen, in terms of dunya. We are doing huge things. And Allah SWT is saying, let me tell you, they are the biggest losers. These are the ones who kafaru bi ayati rabbihim. With their words and with their actions, they rejected the signs of their Lord. So, the disbelievers. And the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those people who do anything without intending for the closeness and acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is he is or that person is by action and by spirit negating the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is saying that I am doing this but I don't expect a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically he does not believe by action, by in spirit over his meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَحَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ So their deeds have gone to waste If it was not done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will go to waste فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا Those great deeds that they would have done all of them would go to waste فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا We shall assign no weight to them at all So this is where anything that is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more purely it is done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more weight it is going to have on the balance of deeds. The Prophet ﷺ has said that a person would come on the Day of Judgment great in appearance, huge, and their deeds will be great. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the mizan, in the, in the balance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll be lighter than a mosquito. Because 
the things that they did was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did it for the world. The Prophet has also told us that those people who do things for the people of the world for achievements in this world, on the day of judgment they will be told to go and seek the reward from the people for whom they did it. And nobody will have anything to give on that day except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ This is their reward. This is their punishment. Jahannam. بِمَا كَفَرُوا Upon the kufr that they did. وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِي وَرُسُلِي هُزُوَا And how they made my signs and my messengers. They took it in a jest. They made a mockery out of it. My ayat and my rasul. And my, my messengers. Rusul. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا As for the people. So compared to that, the people who bring faith, definitely. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ it's Two things. Have, they have faith and do good deeds. And good deeds are those that are exemplified by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُولَا Allah is promising that for them there is Jannatul Firdaus Nuzula. Their entertainment, their honor, their welcome, their uh, you know taking care of and making them them guests will be in Jannatul Firdaus. So Jannatul Firdaus, Firdaus is the highest level of Jannah. The Prophet has said that when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, ask for Firdaus because that is the highest level of Jannah. So Allahumma Rzukna Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma Hasibna Hisaban Yasira. خالدين فيها الله سبحانه وتعالى says that they will live there forever لا يبغون عنها حوالا and then the added thing is that they will not wish to move from there whenever you get any pleasure in this world it, that pleasure has a level a, a point where you become satisfied with it and then you want to move on to further new car, new house, new clothing everything has its limit but then the Jannah would be such that there will be no desire to move forward from it and there will be no taking away in Jannah. That those pleasures, those benefits, those bounties will never be taken away. Now the last two ayat, the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned particular benefits of these two ayat. There was a sahabi who said to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, I intend to, and I make an intention that I am going to wake up for the Hajjud, but I am not able to do so. The Prophet ﷺ said, read these two ayat before you go to bed, and then you will wake up on the time that you wish. And this is reported from other nations as well. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِذَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَذَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي Say to them that if the ocean were to be ink for writing the words of my Lord, لَنَفِذَ الْبَحْرُ The ocean would have been consumed قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَذَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي Before the words of my Lord are exhausted. So the oceans, a lot of water, unimaginable, uncountable drops of water if they were made to be the ink and someone starts to write the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala someone wants to encompass and put on paper the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like Allah is infinite, His knowledge is infinite His, his, his ilm is infinite so therefore it is infinite, nobody can put it on paper, nobody can surround it so all the oceans will be exhausted before the Lord's word, words are exhausted وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ وَذَدَا Even though if we were to bring another ocean like it in addition. So basically limitless. Oceans after oceans after oceans. But they cannot write the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ Say to them, إِنَّمَا This is the last time. إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرْ Say to them, I am nothing, no one except a human. قُلْ Say to them, إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرْ I am but a human being. مِثْلُكُمْ Like you. What does that mean? That in physical aspects, in being the things of humanity, being a human, what makes a human, I am a human being. Yuha ilayya, but my specialty is Yuha ilayya, anna ma ilahukum ilahu wa'i. So those people who say that the Prophet is only a human just like us, yes, physically he's like a human, he's, he, he's, he is a human, he has those humanly qualities, he's hurt, he feels, uh, he, he was born, he died, uh, passed away from this world apparently, all of those things are true, but Yuha ilayya. There's something very special about the Prophet ﷺ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wahi to them. Annama ilahu kum ilahu wahid. That your God is the one God. So this is the essence of all wahi. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ So the one who hopes to meet his Lord. And what is the hope to meet your Lord? That you one day you have belief that there is an Allah that I have to stand before and I have to be answerable for what I do and I, my, 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 my deliverance, my um, 
Freedom on that day is dependent on the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Then this person must do, whoever hopes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must do righteous deeds. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And must not associate anyone in the worship of his Lord. So the background of this ayah is that a sahabi said that, Ya Rasulullah, and there's different additions to this, more or less similar, that they said that, Ya Rasulullah, we are praying, and then someone walks in and we see that somebody is looking at us, or when we spend and somebody gets knowledge of it, so we spend even more thinking that this is, it gives us pleasure and we spend even more. So this ayah came that when you do something, do not associate any partners. Wala yushrik means do not consciously associate any partners with the intention of associating, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked and then there's explanation to this that when you are praying and somebody comes or when you're doing a good deed and people automatically got, get knowledge of it and they might praise you or they might, you, uh, they might uh, you know, hold you in high esteem, but you have no intention of getting that benefit from them, then it is permissible. The problem is when you start doing even more thinking that it will make people happy, or you start doing things even better so that people would become happy, that's when the, that, that's what is prohibited and the Prophet ﷺ has said that that is something that I'm really worried about my ummah. This is shirk khafi the light hidden shirk or associating part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, that a person includes anyone else. In, in matters of praise even to the extent of praise that uh, anyone apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is basically riya or showing off. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that I'll tell you one dua that if you make that dua Allah will protect you from all sorts of shirk which is Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika wa ana a'lamu Ya Allah I seek refuge from, with you from anything that I associate with you and I know about it. Wa astaghfiruka and I seek refuge lima la a'lamu over what I do not know. So I, uh, I seek uh, forgiveness. Astaghfiruka lima la alam. Or in your own words, you can say that, Ya Allah, I seek protection from, with you, I seek protection with you from associating any partners that I know. I associate any partners and I know about it. And I seek forgiveness for any association or any shirk that I do and I don't know about it. Forgiveness about what I don't know and protection from what I do knowingly. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samir alim wa tu alayna inna kanta tawwaw al-rahim wa salli wa sallim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqih sayyidina wa manana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in ameen bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin Surah Kahaf alhamdulillah is complete after Ramadan inshallah 8th of May inshallah we will resume these tafsir sessions and we will start with Surah Mariam Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samir alim wa ma tawfiqin la billah